Standing before you this evening is an outgoing, vivacious, confident, successful woman. But it wasn't always this way. Let me take you back to 1961. Don't do the math. It was a car, dark, cold night, March. There was snow on the ground. And after a few hours of labor, my dear poor mother, all five feet of her, delivered this healthy 10 and a half pound baby, moi. Now the midwife coddled me in a blanket and proudly presented me to my parents. Mr. and Mrs. Empson, congratulations on your healthy baby boy. Wait a minute. Did she just say boy? Yes. You see, I was assigned male at birth. And that happened based purely on my genitalia. The midwife actually didn't have enough information to make that assertion at that point, because boy kind of denotes gender, and gender doesn't really present itself for at least a couple of years. Fast forward, I'm approaching puberty. My body is defying me. I've always known deep inside I was a girl. You see, our gender identity is what's in our minds, in our brains, in our head in our soul, in our spirit, in our essence, and in our heart. I always knew who I was. But I had no frame of reference. Think about this. There was no Google. Can you imagine life without Google? There were no articles in the newspaper. I completely missed Christine Jorgensen in 64 because I was just three years old. So I had nothing to compare except the people around me. And any hint of my femininity was very quickly admonished. In fact, my father even used the name Michelle as a derogatory term for whenever I wasn't quite masculine enough. And it would take me a long time before I decided to reclaim that name for my own and hold it true. As I approached adolescence and my body continued to defy who I truly was inside. I discovered another quirk here. I was attracted to women. I always had been, I was attracted to girls. But as much as I was attracted to one, I also wanted to be her, desperately. So I internalized this. I internalized it as transphobia. I didn't know that term. Lots of hindsight. I self-judged. I became deeply depressed. I suffered anxiety each and every waking day, every hour, every minute. I was desperately aware of this gender dys dysphoria that was holding me back. 35, 40 years later, 2011, was the year that I finally decided to do something about it. And when I did, a quote came to me. It's a beautiful quote from Trina Paulus. Some of you may know it. It goes like this. The little girl asked the wise old woman, how does one become a butterfly? The old lady pondered this for a second and then replied, first, you must want to fly so much you're prepared to give up being a caterpillar. I decided to give up being a caterpillar. You see, for way too long, I'd been dressing up in guys' clothes. Go figure. It was time to end all of that. But it came at a price, and it was an expensive price. I lost my wife of 23 years. I lost my two children, stepchildren. I lost six grandchildren. I lost my home, my career, my pension, my money. But I had never felt so good. And yet the loss was also not my own. My wife would say, you, you are the bitch that stole my husband. She was right. 
I was. This is my road, less traveled. It's a road full of twists and turns, a road with potholes so big you could park a car in them. Steep, steep hills that I needed to climb, and to this day, I continue to climb. It's not for the faint of heart, I promise you. I want to leave you with one last thought. If we can come to love and respect and embrace our own uniqueness, whatever that is, then just maybe we can come to respect the uniqueness of everyone around us. Thank you very much.